All right, welcome back. We're going to do our final weld on MIG welding before we start our final project for the term. We're going to do a butt joint again, but this time the butt joint will be horizontal. Instead of being flat down in front of us, we're going to try and weld a little bit out of position. This is your first taste of the welds we'll be doing in level two. Um, it, we're going to tack it together down on the table flat, but when we weld it, you need to tack it to um, another piece of scrap or something that will prop it up. And that's why I have our multi-T from the last weld here is I'm going to set this up and I'm going to tack this to here after I get it fit together. So again, um, just like our flat butt joint on gas metal arc welding, we are going to match these up, get a good bend. Uh, if these are curved, try and match them up. I'm gonna put um, a little bit more than an eighth inch gap but not quite 3 16 but uh, somewhere around there, an eighth inch or so gap. And then we'll tack each end, making sure that it's flush to each other. We really don't want an offset or a twist. It's very important that you take the time to tack these joints perfectly flat together, all right? I would keep the same settings that worked for you on the flat butt joint for this horizontal one, those quarter inch and 3 16 settings on the chart. Make sure it's flat. Okay, now that we have it tacked together on one side, again, I take the time to open this up if I need to, uh, bend it a little bit if I need to. You wanna make sure that that gap is even and flush all the way down. We're gonna tack the other side, cover. In each booth, there's a positioner that you can swing around and tack this to so it's more right in front of you. I recommend that because it's gonna be a little bit easier than trying to get down low. Uh, I'm actually probably gonna scoot my stool back and I'll kneel down in this position to get a good vantage point. Again, you wanna make sure that you as the welder can see the puddle and are comfortable with what you're doing. The ABCs of welding have always been, always be comfortable. In industry though, that may not be very feasible, but while we are practicing and learning it, you try and get comfortable. So I'm gonna tack this butt joint right here on the edge of our multi tee as I lean down here, I'm going to get again comfortable as possible. And my gun angle, I'll try and show this to you. I still want to push and I want to be slightly favoring up on the top piece. Gravity again is going to come down and pull that puddle to the bottom piece. So my method of doing this weld, I am typically just above this bottom edge right here. So I'm gonna push this out. I envision my wire barely going past this bottom edge and shooting towards the back top edge. And that's kind of the gun angle that I want to have as I am also pushing it slightly, all right? So I'm going to, I'll start on my tack. My wire stick out is really long right now just to show you where it's pointing to, but I'm slightly up, slightly pointing towards that back top edge and I will push it all the way down. And I want to stay again in front of the puddle, making sure that I can have a, uh, a good lead on it. Even still, this is a bit low for me. I would put it on that positioner in your booth. There we go. Let's see how we shot on the first try. All right. As you can see, uh, this one is, in my opinion, even easier than the flat one based on getting familiar with the body position. The back side almost always will weld itself if you have your right gap and decent settings. You'll see that along this back side, we have complete fusion top to bottom, and it's almost entirely flush with the back side. At the very beginning, when I was on my tack, it was a little cold. And again, a trick for that is you feather out your tacks with the grinder, kind of thin them out, grind them down a little bit. You'll actually be able to penetrate 
and weld through the tack and you'll be able to get better fusion all the way down. But that's what we're shooting for. And you'll see the front side is fairly flush, if not a little sunk in, and that's all right. If we needed to put a cap on that, we could always grind this down just a little bit and weld over it. As you do these assignments, feel free to grab some thinner material, um, some thicker material. When we do our final stool project, you'll be welding on some fairly thin material and adjusting your settings and being familiar with how to weld on that thin stuff is pretty important. So you might even want to take a few practice runs after this assignment on some thin square tubing to understand how you're going to weld it. Okay, so there's our horizontal butt joint. Again, the settings for this are pretty important. I would look at the chart and I would look at the material I'm welding on and I would go slightly less the material thickness recommendation. So this is quarter inch material. I don't have this on quarter inch thickness right now. I have it slightly less. If I was welding on 3 16 material, I would weld it on slightly less than 3 16 material and all depending on the gap too. If I put a large gap in here, I need to put my settings down further. If I have a really tight gap, I want to turn my settings up, primarily focusing on your wire feed speed. Wire feed speed is your penetration. It is what's driving that puddle deeper and further into your weld. Don't just turn your voltage up because all that's going to do is flatten out your weld. Really take and maybe between each attempt, try and increase five or 10 inches per minute if you're not getting full penetration on that previous weld. And that will help you drive that puddle in there and again, lead that puddle, be at the front end of it, do your best. And this one, I really like this weld. I think it's one of the funnest ones for me personally, just because I like the way it turns out when everything's set up just right. All right, good luck.